Well, welcome to another Multiply Group video where we're talking today about intimacy with Jesus. You've been talking about fellowship with God with your M groups, and today we really want to press in a little bit deeper into what that kind of fellowship to look like. There's a couple things I want you to remember about fellowship with God as we start. Number one, the reason we talk about Bible reading as fellowship with God is because of what the Bible is. The Bible is God's revelation of himself. So we've got God revealing himself generally through creation, the sun, the moon, the stars. We see the, the grandeur, the, the, the bigness of God, if you will, through creation. But it's through the word of God, through the Bible, that we see really, really in a detailed way, in an intricate way, who God is. And so part of the reason we want you to think about your daily Bible reading as fellowship with God is because of what the Bible is. It is God revealing himself to us. So every time you read the Bible, you are seeing something of the nature and the character of God. But the second thing I want you to remember is we've encouraged you based on that nature of the Bible as revelation to read the Bible through this threefold pattern of knowing God, loving God, and obeying God. Knowing God is where we're really spending time thinking about what this passage is telling us about God and his plans and his purposes. Loving God is where we respond to God's revelation of himself by worshiping him, uh, setting our affections on him. And obeying God is where we move to actually doing something with what we've been told. If there's a promise we're to trust. If there's a sin we're to stop. If there's an obedience issue we're to address in our lives. If there's a relationship thing. Whatever that thing is that comes out of the reading of God's word, we want the obedience of, from that reading time to really drive us forward into application. So that's the fellowship with God thing we've been talking about. Today what I want to press into a little bit more is this idea of intimacy. The reality is within that knowing, loving, and obeying uh, trifold kind of reading plan, we want you to hear from God. We want you to have the Holy Spirit impress things on your mind and your heart. We want you to enjoy God. We want you to experience His presence and enjoy the fact that you are His child. We want you to be empowered by God. We want you through that time in the Word to really be empowered in your soul and your spirit to do the things God's called you to do. What's important to recognize here is what we're encouraging then is something more than just going through the motions or checking a box or reading it for a Bible study. The reason this fellowship with God is so important is because the intimacy we're encouraging you to have is one in which you are really experiencing the presence of God. So I want to suggest to you four things that are really critical if you're going to experience this kind of intimacy with Jesus that we're talking about today. Number one, a quiet soul. If you're going to experience real intimacy with Jesus as you're spending time in the Word, as you're fellowshipping with God, your soul must be quiet. You know, one of the greatest obstacles we're facing to real intimacy with the Lord is busyness and the noise of our world. Listen to Psalm 37.7. It says, Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for Him. Do not be agitated by one who prospers in His way, by the person who carries out evil plans. And that, that be silent or be still is something we see consistently through the, path, the scriptures. And on the one hand, it's a call to remember that we are humans and that God is God. But on the other hand, there's also a kind of a posture it's encouraging us to adopt. It's a posture of being silent and still before the Lord so that we can really see him move and hear his voice. You know, one of the greatest challenges you're going to face to really getting something out of daily Bible reading is being still and quiet before the Lord. You need a quiet location. It's hard to experience this kind of intimacy in a coffee shop where there's a lot of noise. It's hard to experience this kind of intimacy when kids are running circles around your kitchen table. You need a quiet time. There's a time in which your soul is quiet. Typically what I've found, especially for those of us that have kids, you gotta beat the kids up in the morning. <laughs> the only way to really find that kind of quiet location and that quiet soul and a quiet time is if you're getting ahead of your kids in the morning when they wake up. For those of you who don't have kids, that might be a little bit easier. But finding a time where literally there's not a lot of noise around you is critical. You need a quiet mind. You need to find a way to still your mind and your heart from all the things you've got to do that day. It's why we typically encourage you to start your day that way. It's hard sometimes once you're in the middle of your day to switch gears out of work and to-do lists to, and to really be still. You know, one of the things that we've encouraged in your multiply groups is for you to journal. And I know not everyone is a journaler. Okay, I've been journaling and read, writing down what God's been teaching me from my time in the Word for years. I understand that's not everybody's cup of tea. But I want to remind you that one of the benefits of journaling 
is that it does slow you down and it forces you to really, really listen. So a quiet soul, if you're really gonna experience intimacy with Jesus, find a way to quiet your soul before the Lord. Number two, prayerful interaction. Prayerful interaction. This is where we're really wanting to clarify that when you're reading your Bible and with a kind of fellowship with God posture, you are not just reading to prepare a Bible study or a lesson. You're not primarily reading to get something out of it that you go give somebody else. Now, let me be clear, that doesn't mean there aren't gonna be things that come out of your Bible reading that you might share with somebody else. But first and foremost, what you're trying to do is to listen to the voice of God. Doesn't mean you turn your brain off and just kind of have an experience. You're really engaging with mind, heart, and soul. But you are trying to prayerfully engage with the Word of God. Let me tell you what I mean by that. You are asking, first and foremost, as you read the Word, for illumination. You're praying and saying, God, would you help me as I come to your Word today? Understand this, to hear from your voice. So prayerful interaction on the one hand looks like starting every single time you get into the Word by praying and asking God to speak to you. But it also looks like as you're reading the Bible, really engaging with God in the first and the second person. So let's go back to journaling. If you're journaling and writing things down that God's saying to you, that you're not just saying Christians everywhere should obey the promises of God, but instead you're saying, God, you are saying this to me. First person, second person pronouns really, really bring a kind of prayerful engagement to the Word of God that can make your Bible reading really come to life. Spending time prayerfully interacting with the scriptures will, will really help you in your intimacy with Jesus. Number three is confession of sin. Confession of sin. So we've talked about on the one hand, a quiet soul. Number two, prayerful interaction. But number three, confession of sin. Now we're gonna be talking about confession of sin later as you walk through your groups and as you confess sin to one another. But what I wanna encourage you to recognize is that I believe every single day we are called to confess our sin to God. Every single day we should be coming before the Lord with a kind of declaration of our need. You know, the, the Beatitudes tell us that the blessed is the poor in spirit. That poor in spirit phrase means the poorest of the poor, the beggar on the street. You and I come before the Lord as beggars, as poor people, as broken people, desperately in need of God's grace. One of the ways you will continue to stay desperate and needy before God is by coming to Him in confession of your sin. Maybe that's a word you spoke to somebody the day before that you know was harsh or critical or said in anger. Maybe that's something you thought about, some feelings or thoughts that you harbored towards somebody that you need to confess to God. Maybe that's an emotion like pride or lust that was welling up in your soul and you're bringing that to the Lord. One of the things that happens when we bring that to the Lord is we experience a real kind of intimacy because here's the beauty of confession. When I confess my sin to God, it makes the gospel real. It's not that I need a savior sometime later in my life or somebody else needs the gospel. When I confess my sin, I'm saying, no, Jesus, I need you right now. There's something powerful about confessing your sin to God. Again, back to the journaling thing, one of the things I do every day when I spend time in the Word and I write things down is I'm coming to God writing down things that I am confessing to Him. As I'm reading His Word and as He's convicting me, I'm declaring those things to the Lord. So remember, if you're going to experience real intimacy with Jesus, confess your sin to Him on a daily basis, especially as you come to the Word. But third, I would or fourth, excuse me, I would encourage reception of grace. So we've talked about quiet soul, prayerful interaction, confession of sin, but the reception of grace. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Every single time you read the word, every time you read the scriptures, I believe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. I believe the Holy Spirit's moving in the life of a believer. And one of the beautiful things that we get to experience is a fresh breath of God, a fresh expression of God's grace in our lives as we experience his presence. I believe that we are forgiven uh, through the justification we have in Christ by faith alone of our past, our present, and our future sins. Our standing with Jesus does not change as Christians. We are forgiven, we are His children. But our experience of the Spirit and our experience of God's grace is something that we can enjoy and really feel and experience on a daily basis, especially as we spend time in God's Word. So one of the things I wanna encourage you to do is as you're reading the Bible, and especially as you come across promises from God, 
or you see different elements and facets of God's character is that you take time to be still and say, God, I thank you that you've promised, for example, to never leave me or forsake me if you're reading Matthew 28. And that you would just kind of be still for a while and let the grace and the mercy of God minister to your soul as you kind of chew on that and marinate on that. Spend time just creating space in your time with the Word just for the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus to kind of touch you afresh. Maybe there's a difficult decision or problem that you're dealing with and you're saying, God, I need you to give me strength today to walk through this. Take time just to be still and quiet before God and say, God, would you give that to me right now and help me? And you'll be amazed at how you'll experience the presence of God in a fresh new way. One of the things I desperately want for those of you going through our multiply groups and for our church at large is for you not just to spend time in the Word, but for you to really fellowship with God as you read your Bibles. But within that fellowship, we're praying and trusting that you'll experience a real kind of intimacy with Jesus that comes from really enjoying His presence, being powered by what He's given you in His grace and His love for you, that you would just really experience that in a fresh and a new way. So I'm praying for you guys as you continue to walk through your groups. Hope this uh, video has been helpful for you today as you continue to talk about fellowship with God and intimacy with Jesus.